and welcome. Thank you for popping in. If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you find this content helpful and you'll be notified of the next video release. You can also check out my website consultingninja.tech to message me directly or browse the resources section where I've compiled a whole bunch of stuff that is free and very helpful. With that out of the way, we are going to be jumping into component libraries. I'm going to be demoing uh, Material UI or formerly Material UI, now they just go by MUI. So I've already installed a Skeleton React application using Vite, so I'm not going to show you that part. But if you go to MUI.com, uh, the documentation shows here what you need to, what dependencies they have now. So you can just copy this and go back to our terminal and paste those in there. Uh, MUI now relies on this Emotion React and Emotion Styled packages. Um, so we have to install those these days. They did not used to, but they are growing. And then they don't come standard with this. I don't know why. But before we get any further, I'm going to point out that there is a material icons section. So if you go to search and type icons, it brings you here. I don't know why it's scrolling down to the bottom. That's annoying. Um, but there are tons. Uh, let's see, just in the, in the, they have one, two, three, four, five different variants. And there is a, uh, 2,000 icons, over 2,000 icons available uh, just in this variant alone. Uh, so these are super helpful, but we do have to install them separately. Um, and I also will point out that now you have to have all of their base packages installed in order to use the icons. You can't just install the icons by themselves, but in a previous version you could. So uh, there are less icons available, but I think it's like uh, Material UI 4 or something like that, um, lets you install just the icons and use them. Uh, there's a lot of really good ones that are now available though, so I think it's probably worth it to just go ahead and install the latest. But we can install that using this uh, right here. So let's go ahead and copy that and put that in as well. And then the other thing that I will point out is uh, I'm using Vite. And in order for the hot module reload to work with Material UI, we need to install a plugin for that as well. So let's do an npm install uh, Vite plugin Material UI. And before we fire up our development server, inside of our Vite, uh, Vite config.js, we need to then import uh, our our plugin meet plugin material UI and then we'll add that to the plugins list here like so once we've saved that we can go back to our terminal and do an npm run dev and everything is fired up and you've seen that little reload in the background there uh, our hot module is hot module reload is also now working again so if you forgot that step, be sure to add the plugin on the install and add it to your uh, vite.config so that you can get the benefit of not having to hit the refresh button <laughs> every, every time you change something. Okay, so back on materialui.com, I'm going to show you guys just a little bit of how this works. So if you just click this getting started button, it'll bring you to another page with a giant uh, navigation bar and if you click components you will see all of these components displayed here and it's all pre pre-written code so these are chunks that we can just copy and paste and put in our application um, let's scroll down to navigation and click drawer um, something that every application needs nowadays is some sort of navigation component and in here you'll see I mean they've got just all different kinds uh, of variants for drawers and each one has this little play with it area and then on, underneath they have a show the source and edit in code sandbox you can edit in stack blitz copy it uh, reset the focus so you have all these different options there 
So let's go down to the mini. I like this mini variant. And we'll, let's take a peek. Um, so before we copy the source, let's take a peek at it. And I want to point out, if you're new to React, you might want to go check out my video uh, popping up in the top right hand corner of your screen. Uh, because these component libraries, they're pretty hefty. So this, just the uh, drawer that we're seeing here, this mini variant, uh, has all of this code. Um, it's like 200 and some lines just for that drawer. Now, I am going to show you guys how we can clean that up. So if that helps, uh, please proceed. Otherwise, check out my beginner React uh, project first before you jump uh, all in with such a large endeavor like this. So let's go ahead and just copy that now. And inside of our Visual Studio Code, let's create a new file here in source. And let's call it mini drawer.jsx. Now, most of this uh, Mature UI stuff is written in TypeScript. I'm going to show you guys all you need to do if you are not familiar with TypeScript. I also have a video on that. A beginner video on that if you want to check that out I will uh, also put that up in the top right hand corner of the screen right now as well and you can check that out but all we need to do to make this work in regular JavaScript is just to remove a few pieces of the TypeScript and that's basically just these uh, anywhere where there's like that colon and then this um, the interface name you just need to delete those out so let's go ahead and do that just delete this delete that and delete that colon delete that interface and this one and then here delete this interface and delete it from here then we just need to delete the imports for those types out of the top because JavaScript does not know anything about types. So delete that type and then delete uh, these types as well. And save. In our app.jsx, let's open this up and delete everything out of here except for the container. And let's just, um, well, whoops. Let's delete this state as well. We don't need that and delete all this. Boom, boom, gone, gone, gone. And then let's import mini drawer from mini drawer. And then go ahead and render that component there and save. We can see we have our uh, drawer here. And this works exactly like we just saw it. no further coding necessary on our part we've just copied and pasted that component dropped it right in here and we're using it without any issues so that's pretty cool um, you can see how this would be really powerful uh, you can throw together an application using these pre-written pieces pretty quickly uh, i will point out that uh, you probably don't want to just do that I would recommend that you read the documentation so that you know like what each of these pieces are doing because um, you know you're going to end up getting yourself into a situation where something doesn't work and you don't know how to fix it because you did not read the documentation and you're not really understanding what is going on here. So that little aside, uh, I'm going to show you guys how to clean this up a bit because as I mentioned, I mean we're looking at uh, just over 200 lines. And what we do in our applications is we split out, um, you can see that this is making use of these styled pieces and um, you can pull all of this stuff out. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's create a new folder, or uh, yeah, new folder inside of source and call this uh, styled components. And in here, let's just create one file called styled components.js and what we're going to do is 
from here let's go ahead and just everything above this export default function mini drawer let's grab all of this all the way up to that const drawer width and cut and then come over here and paste and then let's give ourselves a couple of uh, extra lines here and we want to cut these imports out and add those to this file and let's copy this one because we need part of it in the other file still and we're not using the theme and then we can delete the styled out of there and then uh, let's go ahead and move back here and if you look at what is going on here um, you will see that these are just being used later on so really all we need to do is export oops export these so let's add an export in front of that and an export in front of this one and an export in front of this one and we can save that now and in our mini drawer let's go ahead and import uh, let's go ahead and import a drawer and we're importing it from the styled components one so not the not the not the default material UI one but the one that is styled in the styled components and then we also want the uh, app bar let's just take a look drawer app bar and drawer header oops and drawer header and I think I typed that wrong that is a capital B and save and you can see in our application everything is working exactly as it's supposed to our file is now uh, down to 147 lines from over 200 and we have uh, successfully split out all of this styling so it's a nice way of uh, cleaning up your files. It does start to bulk your hierarchy, but when you're looking at applications, um, I think anything over 200 um, is just starting to get a little excessive, and it's just nice to be able to uh, separate that stuff out. Uh, you also you know, would frequently be using these in multiple places, maybe not so much with the navigation component, but a lot of times if you're styling something directly like this, you would probably be using it in multiple places like a text field so if you have a um, a styled text field that is specific to your organization you're probably going to put that in a file like this and then anywhere else in your application where you need that text field you would just import it and use it there so maybe not a great example with the navigation but this certainly has its use cases so there we are there is a very basic demonstration on using a component library I hope that you guys have found this helpful if you did please like and subscribe if there's anything else you'd like me to cover comment below with what that is and stay tuned for more content coming to you have a great day